fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fella! Hail, Silver! Aye! Dan Reed, teenage nephew of the Lone Ranger, rode a trail in the hills toward the town of Flint Rock. Dan saw two riders coming toward him, and as they drew closer, he realized they were boys about his own age. Oh, oh. As Dan approached, the two young horsemen stopped, partially blocking the trail. Dan pulled to a halt. Oh, oh, Victor, oh, boy, oh. Do you mind letting me pass? Listen to him, Red. <laughs> he sounds like he doesn't want to stop and talk to us. Yeah, so on notice. I don't. Uh, I'm in a hurry. Let me pass. Look, nobody your size talks to Red Blair that way and gets away with it. Red Blair? I've heard of you. Who hasn't? All the other young fellas in town are afraid of Red. Guess you haven't lived around here very long. Long enough. You know, Red, this young maverick doesn't show you the proper respect. I've been thinking the same thing, Sammy. Maybe we ought to beat a little respect into him. I'm not looking for a fight. I told you I'm in a hurry to get to town. <laughs> See, Red, he's scared already. I'm not afraid of either one of you. <laughs> well, if you're not, get off that horse and prove it. I told you I'm not looking for a fight. <laughs> he's yellow, that's what's the matter. Yeah, that's right. Come on, boy. And this will prove it. Oh, easy, boy. Now, if you aren't yellow, get off your horse. Sammy won't interfere. Easy, man. Just steady, boy. I'm ready. <laughs> this is going to be good. Tie the maverick in knots, Red. That's just what I'm going to do. <laughs> you ask for this? <laughs> I'll beat you to pulp. Though Red Blair was slightly taller and heavier than Dan Reed, he soon realized that the boy he'd forced into a fight was much more than he'd bargained for. Dan had been taught the art of boxing for self-protection, and he made every blow count as Red swung one wild blow after another. Miss, come on, Red, what's the matter with you? He, he doesn't give me a chance. For another moment, Red stood his ground, though he became panicky as Dan landed blow after blow. Then Dan swung a left jab to the ribs and followed through with a hard right to Red's chin. Get up if you want more. No, no, no. I've had enough. No. Maybe your friend Sammy wants to dismount and try to... Stay away from me. Get up. Come on, boy. Get up. Friend has left you. 
Oh, look, I, I, I don't want to fight anymore. Neither do I, Red. Hey, you're the first one who's ever beat me. I don't know how you did it. I learned to box. I don't believe in going around picking fights like you do. Now, listen. If you want to join our gang in town, I don't you believe can... in gangs. They lead to trouble. I don't have you at all. Most of the young fellas I know are... Well, are tough. You have to be tougher than they are to get along. I get along all right. Yeah. Yeah, you sure do. You're tough enough when it comes to fighting, but otherwise you don't act tough. I've been taught to believe in what's right and fight for it. Not to try to shove other people around just to prove I'm tougher than they are. I never heard anyone talk like that before. What's your name? Dan Reed. Dan Reed, huh? Maybe things would be different for me if there were fellas around like you to be friends with, Dan. I'm willing to be friends, Red. What? You mean that? Sure. Well, then let's shake on it, won't it? All right. <laughs> you can call on me if you ever need help. Thanks. I'd better be getting along to town now. Mind if I ride along with you? Of course not. We're friends now, remember? Well, sure, but some people wouldn't want to be seen in town with Red Blair. <laughs> Well, let's go. Easy, Easy Victor. Just let you Come on, get up. Yeah. Come on, Victor. Dan left Red in town and went to the general store. After buying supplies, he returned to the camp in the hills he shared with the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Oh, ho, Victor. Hold on. Hold steady, fella. Hello, Dan. It not take you long. I came right back, Tonto. You alone? Ah. Uh-huh. We go with Lone Ranger, search hills for outlaw hideout. We separate and him not back yet. Oh, I didn't know we came out here because of outlaws. Oh, outlaw gang commit many robbery around here. Them not get caught. Sheriff in Flint Rock, no marshal in Pecos, friend of ours. Him get marshal, ask Lone Ranger, help find gang. Oh. Gang have plenty smart leader. Him name Tuffy Blair. Tuffy Blair? Golly. You hear of him? No. No, but something happened today while I was going to town. I'll tell you about it. Briefly, Dan told Tonto what had happened between him and Red Blair. When Dan finished, Tonto remarked, I me, me hear a young fellow named Red Blair. Him met your outlaw leader. He is? Gosh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Me think Blair, fella, plenty surprised you win fight, Dan. <laughs> well, he was surprised, but he seemed willing to be friendly. He rode to town with me. Uh, him not mention outlaw uncle? No. Well, here comes the Lone Ranger now. Ah. Oh, 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 easy, silly big fella. <laughs> no luck, Tonto. Tuffy Blair covered his tracks well. Uh-huh. Dan, you look slightly banged up. <laughs> Something happened? Uh, I was forced into a fight, sir. Oh, tell me about it. Once more, Dan related what had happened when he met Red Blair and his pal on the trail. The Lone Ranger smiled slightly as he said, <laughs> I suppose young Blair has a few marks to show, too. Yes, sir. One of his eyes was blackened when we finished. I hope he learned a lesson from the whipping you gave him. Well, Dan say, Red Blair won't be friends. Them ride to town together. That's right, sir. I hope he's sincere, Dan, but he might hold a grudge. Be careful after this when you go to town. Yes, sir. In town, Sammy approached Red, who was lounging in front of the general store. Man alive, look at that shiner. Sure took a beating, Red. Shut up, Sammy. Now, notice you lit out in a hurry when he started toward you on the trail. Yeah, sure. I never did claim to be as tough as you, Red. But I figure now you're not so tough. I even saw you riding into town with the boy who whipped you. You were acting real friendly with him. Well, what of it? Maybe you were just putting on so you'd have a better chance of getting back at him later on. Is that it? Yeah, could be. I'd hate to think you were chicken-hearted enough to let him get away with what he did to you. Look, Sammy, I know what I'm doing. The other fellas look down on you if you don't get even and prove you're still plenty tough, huh? 
Maybe I was taken in by the friendly talk young Reed handed me at that. By Jiminy, Sammy, I'll find a way to prove I'm even tougher than you and the others thought I was. The following morning, the Lone Ranger and Toto went again to search for the outlaw's hideout. Dan Reed had saddled Victor and was about to ride from the camp hidden in a clump of cottonwoods when he heard fast hoofbeats moving along the nearby trail. That's Red Blair. Seems to be in a hurry. The way he's heading into the hills. Victor, I think we'll follow him and see where he goes. Easy, boys. Daddy. Come on, Victor. Dan followed Red for some distance. Finally, as he approached some big boulders... Ho, ho, Victor, ho, ho! Reach and don't move, you! I'm reaching. Yeah. Oh, ho, boy, ho, ho. Uh, boy. I don't carry a gun. Then you can put your hands down. No tricks or I'll plug you. You don't have to hold a gun on me. Maybe not. But I'm going to anyway. Now tell me why you were following Red. Red who? Don't try to act like you don't know who I mean. Red Blair, that's who. Why did you follow him up this way? I was just riding this way, that's all. Stop lying. There's no reason for you to ride this little used trail. I'm sure you were following Red, and I want to know why. I told you why I came this way. It won't do you any good to act innocent, youngster. Red Blair went past you a short time ago. And now you come along. I'm taking you with me to face, Red. You'll know the answer, I reckon. I'll ride along the trail the way you're heading. And remember, I'll have a gun at your back. Come on, get up there, boy. Red Blair had arrived at a large cabin hidden in a hollow. Oh, 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 boy. As he dismounted, <laughs> the cabin door opened. Hey, Taffy, it's your red-headed nephew. Well, come on in, Red. Hi, Dave. Hi, Red. Hello, Uncle. How are you, Red? Sit down. Thanks. What brings you out here? You might have been followed from town. No, no, I, I was careful. Now, look, Uncle, I, I'm big for my age, and I want to join your gang. <laughs> That's a hot... Well, shut up, Dave. What gave you the idea I'd take you into the gang, Red? I just thought you would, that's all. I can ride and handle a gun as well as any man. Yeah. Well, I suppose you're just as well off here as you are boarding in town, running with those crazy young mavericks you hang out with. Oh, was uh, Alex on guard at the boulders? Yeah. Are you going to give me a gun, Uncle? Well, I think you're ready to carry oh, one. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, who's that, Dave? No, oh, go see it. It's Alex. He's got a boy with him. They're coming in. What? Dan Reed. So you recognize him, huh, Red? Yeah. He's the fellow who beat me up yesterday. I wondered where you got the shiner. He must have trailed you here, Red. Yeah. Maybe now I can get even for what he did to me. I thought we agreed to be friends, Red. <laughs> that was just talk. So you followed Red out here, huh? You know who I am? I've never seen you before. Well, in case you don't know, I'm Tuffy Blair. Time up, Alex. Right. Then, since Red wants to get even for the beating he took, we'll turn him loose on this young sneak with a leather strap. He'll learn not to go around snooping on people. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
battle to continue. The outlaw leader, Tuffy Blair, ordered one of his men to tie Dan Reed. After Dan was securely tied, Tuffy handed Red a heavy leather belt. Yeah, here, Red. You want to get even? Now go ahead, take this belt. <laughs> All right. Hey, Tuffy, this reminds me of the time you tied a lawman to a tree and used him for a target. Well, God. I... Gosh, Uncle. Did you really do that? Why not? If you have a grudge against someone, I say get even with them any way you can. Hey, Tuffy, come on. The men are waiting for you to go look at that new hideout. All right, all right. Come on, Alex, Dave. Others are waiting. You go ahead, Red. Give that maverick what's coming to him. All right, all right. This is my chance to really give you a good beating, Reed. I thought you wanted to be friends, Red. What made you change? None of your business. I have a right to change my mind. Anyhow, you shouldn't have followed me out here. Your uncle's a killer, Red. He doesn't give people a chance. I didn't think you'd be like... Shut up, do you hear? Can't talk me out of what I'm going to do. Think a minute, Red. Your uncle will hang when he's caught, and so will his men. Do you want to end up that way? I came here to join the gang. I'll show those fellas in town I'm still plenty tough. So that's it. They'd turn against you in a minute if you got into trouble. I forgot my tobacco, so I came back again. What are you waiting for, Red? Thought you are going to give that young sneak a good lesson. He doesn't want to turn out a killer like you. So that's what you said, eh? Give me that strap. Oh, no, wait, Uncle. I didn't say Take that. This strap. Oh, stop it. I didn't say uh, anything. Oh. You didn't say anything. No, you must have thought it. Oh, you... oh, no. Stop being yellow. Go on and use this like you said you wanted to. <laughs> He had no right to turn on me. And he proves he has no feeling for you, Red. I'll fix him for that. I I decided not to use a strap on you after all. If I could get away from here, I'd tell the sheriff about the hideout. I didn't know my uncle was a killer. Do you think you could get away? No, no. He'd be watching. I wouldn't dare turn you loose either, Dan. I I really didn't want to get even. I just That's all right. Red, if you could manage to turn my horse loose without being seen. Yeah, maybe, maybe I could find a way. But what's going to happen? Go home, Victor. He'd go to my friends and they'll follow his trail back here. Leave it to me, Dan. I'll manage it somehow. A short time later, Tuffy and some of the men rode from the hideout. Red waited until they were out of sight. Then he left the cabin. can't leave the hat out red. It's Tuffy's orders. Well, I'm not thinking of leaving, Dave. My uncle told me to be sure to water the horses that are still here. That's that's what I was aiming to do. Uh, well, go ahead, then. But don't try to ride away. I'll be bound to plug you if you do. Well, I, I'm not going to try to leave. Red walked slowly to the place among the trees behind the cabin where the remaining horses, including Victor, were tied to saplings. <laughs> oh, easy there. Steady, Victor, steady. Come on. There, there, you're untied. Go home, Victor. Go home. Hey, Red. I heard hoofbeats leaving. I thought maybe you were triggering me. Well, that confounded stallion the Reed fellow rode got loose and lit out, Dave. Well, it's too late to do anything about it now. But your uncle's going to be plenty sore when he finds out you figured on using that horse. Well, I, I couldn't help it, could I? Well, maybe not. Better get busy watering the rest of them. I'll wait till you're finished. And we'll go inside the cab and wait for the others to come back. They ought to be here before long. Just went to look at the new hideout in case we want to move. Now get busy, Ray. Later that day, when the Lone Ranger and Tonto arrived at the camp, they found Victor waiting. Oh, 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 easy, Scout, easy, fella. Victor saddled. We not see Dan. Dan! Dan, where are you? Look, Timo Savi. Victor's coat covered with sweat. Him run plenty fast. Uh, he's been running recently, too. I tell us something. Otto, Dan must have gone riding and something happened. That must be it. Ah. We found a tracks Victor left. We find Dan. We'll start right now and take Victor along. Let's go. Ah. 
Huffy Blair and his men had returned to their hideout and were gathered in the cabin where Dave was telling what had happened. So when Red went to water the horses like you told him to, Tuffy, that stallion broke loose and got Hold away. Hold on. I didn't tell Red to water any horses. Yes, you didn't, he was. said you did. Why did you, Red? What kind of trick are you trying to put over on us? Well, it wasn't a trick. I, I well, noticed I... you didn't use the strap on his boy like he was supposed to either. I thought there's something wrong about all this. Yeah. You'll risk all our next Tuffy, by telling Red where we were hiding out. He and that other boy may be spying on us together. Yeah, well, I'll find out. Grab Red and tie him to a chair the same as the other one. No, no, no. I, I, I got him. I'm so I, I, Hey, let me go. All right, wait, wait. Huh? Just hold Red a few minutes before you tie him. I'll beat this other youngster till he's unconscious, Red. Unless you speak up and tell me the truth. Give me the strap, somebody. Here it is, Tuffy. All right. I'm tied to this chair. You might even kill me with that heavy strap. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I might. Now, wait, Uncle, don't do it. Dan hasn't done anything to you. So you call him Dan, huh? You are friends. You're in cahoots to trap the gang, maybe. Oh, yeah. Boy, I'll put enough welts on your sneaking friend Dan so he'll never forget. All right, stand back, man. Five hard-faced men watched as Tuffy moved in front of the helpless boy, Dan. As the big muscular outlaw leader raised the heavy strap, Red broke loose from Dave and Alex and leaped toward Tuffy. Just in time to get the full force of the strap. Hey, hey Red broke loose. We'll hold him tight, Dave. Come here, you. No, no, let me go. Are you crazy fool? Who ever heard of one to take a beating for someone else? You'll get one later anyway. Now hold Red this time. All right. Once more, the outlaw raised the strap. Dan winced, waiting for the heavy blow. Then... Drop that strap! What the... The shot startled Tuffy, causing him to drop the strap. He and the others whirled to face the masked figure in the doorway. As they reached for their guns, the masked man's pistols barked. Oh! Reach, all of you. You're also covered from the back window. Hey! He's right. An Indian's at the back window with a gun. At the first shot, Dave and Alex released their hold on Red, who immediately ran over and began to untie Dan. The outlaws, realizing they were trapped between the guns of the masked man and Indian, stood motionless a moment. Then as Dan and Red started past Tuffy toward the door, Tuffy suddenly stepped behind Dan, placing his gun in the boy's back. I'll blast this boy in the back unless you call off the Indian and drop your guns, mister. A short distance away from the hideout, the sheriff and the posse were riding the trail. By chimney, Sheriff, we've been out most every day looking for Tuffy Blay and his game. But we've never found any trace of their hideout. Hey, wait, wait, everybody. Oh, oh, oh. What's the matter, Sheriff? Yeah, why are we stopping? You think you see signs of the gang? Uh, but I did hear some shots. Seemed to come from over in that direction. The shots the sheriff had heard were the ones fired at the hideout. The men sat listening a moment. Then one of them spoke. We didn't hear anything, Sheriff. Reckon you just imagined you heard shots. Yeah, yeah, let's get back to town. It's getting late. Now, listen, all of you. We have a job to do. We'll investigate anything that looks or sounds suspicious. We're going to ride over that hill and investigate those shots you heard, whether you like it or not. Now, come on. Get it. Get it. Get it. At the cabin, Tuffy still stood with his gun at Dan Reed's back. The Lone Ranger hesitated to drop his gun as ordered. It was then that Red suddenly brought his fist down in a smashing blow on Tuffy Blair's gun arm. I won't let you shoot him. Boy, you dirty little... Reach him, freeze, Blair. Don't give up to the men. There are only two. Use your guns, blast them. Hey, Jiminy. You don't draw. Hey, Tuffy, I see a posse coming. I can see him through the window. Dan Red, get out, quick. Come on, Red. We heard shooting me. Hey, you and Tonu. Hey, Sunday, you found Tuffy Blair. That's right. You'll find their lookout tied near the big boulders back along the trail, Sheriff. How don't I surprise him? Uh, that's how they managed to sneak up on us. Get the guns, men. Right, Sheriff. Three of them are wounded, Sheriff. While your men bandage their wounds and prepare to take them to town... I have some unfinished business with Tuffy. Hey, what's the idea? Tuffy, I'm not going to use that heavy strap. I'll holster my guns and give you a chance to defend yourself. Now, why, I'll kill you. Oh, this is a pleasure. 
Tuffy was a big man, and his first impression of his tall, lean opponent was that the fight would be in his own favor. But as the masked man swung sledgehammer blows, making every punch count, Tuffy decided he'd made a mistake. This is for the strapping you started to give the boy. I'll break your neck. Come on. For a few moments, they seemed equally matched. Then Tuffy's expression changed from one of rage to one of panic. Finally, the Lone Ranger drove two heavy blows to the chin. You and this. Get up. Hey, Craig Day, what a beating you gave him. All right, get him out of here, men. What's left of him? We'll put all these killers in jail. Hey, mister, I knew you'd find this gang once you got here. The two boys who went outside really found the gang, Sheriff. Yes. One of them is Tuffy's nephew. Here they come now. I'll ask Dan what happened. Briefly, Dan told what had taken place and how Red had come to his defense. Then the sheriff spoke. Red, I'm glad you turned out the way you have. I reckon having someone for a friend like this boy is really worthwhile, eh? It sure is, Sheriff. Dan, we'll go find Tonto and leave. We'll head south this afternoon. Well, adios, Sheriff. We'll see you soon again. Adios. Dan, are, are you leaving? I, I thought you lived around here. No, Red. The masked man and an Indian named Tonto are my friends. I'm going with them. But I'll see you again someday. Bye. Adios, Dan. Gosh, Sheriff... I don't get this at all. Dan Reed talked to me about, well, being law-abiding and all that. And he leaves with a mask on. Red, that boy Dan, he's mighty lucky to have that masked man for a friend. In fact, there isn't a more law-abiding hombre anywhere. Or one who does more to help the law than that man. He's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace...